Hello, my name is Kathy, and I will be discussing how to tune your harp in this video. You will need a tuning key, which comes with your harp, and an electronic tuner. There are many brands of electronic tuners available, and all of them will do a terrific job. I happen to use a Snark brand electronic tuner because it is tiny and will clip onto my music stand and has a gooseneck that allows me to angle the readout face to the best advantage while I tune. But it really doesn't matter. Any good electronic tuner will work just fine. Now, before we begin to discuss the nuts and bolts of tuning, I wanted to start this video on tuning your harp with a discussion on the merits of tuning your harp to A432 Hz instead of A440 Hz. First off, most music worldwide is played at what is called concert pitch, which is the tuning of the A above middle C to 440 Hz. Now, Hz is a measurement of sound pitch. Anyway, if you want to play music with other musicians, your harp would need to be tuned to A440 Hz. However, it has come to light with the recent rediscovery of the vibration oscillatory nature of the universe that traditional concert pitch, A440 Hz, may in fact generate an unhealthy effect or antisocial behavior in the consciousness of human beings. A432 Hz also known as Verdi's A, an alternative tuning that is mathematically consistent with the universe. Music based on 432 Hz transmits beneficial healing energies because it is a pure tone of math fundamental to nature. Now I tune my harp to A432 Hz. I would like to see this standard adopted all over the world for musicians everywhere. But until that day arrives, A440 Hz is the standard. You have the choice of tuning your harp to A440 or A432. You can always change your tuning preference to A440 if and when you decide to play with other musicians. As for me, I like A432. I can really feel the difference of, of this tuning. It has a super calm and relaxing feel to it. The choice is yours to make. The information in the rest of this video works the same for tuning to A440 or A432. Now, there are two main standards, if you will, for tuning your folk harp. The first is to tune it to a C major scale. The second is to tune it to an E flat major scale. If you have a full set of sharping levers installed on your harp, your best choice would be to tune your harp to E flat major because that will give you the most versatility for your instrument. If you only have an F and C sharping levers installed on your harp, you are limited to tuning the, your harp in C major, which will not allow you to play music in the flat key signatures. Before you tune your harp, make certain all of the sharpening levers are disengaged. When you examine the strings of the harp, you will notice that some of them are red, some white, and some are blue. This color coding is used to help you identify the strings of the harp. All the red strings are C's, all the blue strings are F's, and the white strings comprise the rest of the notes of the scale. The lowest note on a regular 34 or 36 string harp is a red string, a C. No matter if you are going to be tuning your harp to C major or E flat major, this bottom note is always C. We will start with a discussion on tuning your harp to C major. You start with the lowest string, a red string, which makes that string a C. The next string up which is a white string, is a D. The next string, which is also white, is E. The next string is a blue string, and that makes it an F. The string after that is a G, a white string. The next string up is another white string, and it's an A. The next string is also another white string, and it is a B. The next string up 
is another red string, a C, and you start the whole scale again, over and over, all the way up the harp. On a 36 string harp, the highest note is a C. On a 34 string harp, the highest note is an A. Now, to discuss the E flat major tuning. The bottom string is red, so it is a C. The next string is white, and it is tuned as a D. The next string is also white, and you tune this to a D sharp. Now, D sharp is the same as E flat. Most tuners don't call, they don't register, they don't uh, use flats, they just use sharps. So in this case, it's going to be a D sharp. Okay? The next string is a blue string, and so is tuned as an F. The next string is a white, and it is tuned as a G. The next string is also white, and is tuned as a G sharp. The next string up is another white string, and is tuned to A sharp. And the next string up is a red string, once more, and is tuned to C. And then the whole scale is repeated all the way up the harp. A short word here on new harps. A brand new harp will need somewhere in the vicinity of 50 or more tunings before it will begin to hold a tune. Now this isn't as bad as it sounds. All you do is tune your harp before you begin to practice and tune it again after you finish practicing for the day. It really isn't bad to do this and after four to six weeks have passed your harp should be holding a tune quite well and then you will only need to tune your harp once a day before you start practicing. When your harp begins to hold a tune, you will find that before you, you practice tuning becomes little more than a quick check to make sure everything is in order. For the most part, I rarely have to adjust a string anymore. It's just a, it's just a check for me. When you first tune a brand new harp, you start at the lowest string and work your way all the way up to the top string. Then you immediately tune it again, starting with the lowest string. You only need to do this with your very first tuning because by the time you have gotten to the upper strings, the tension has caused the lower strings to go out of whack. The second tuning, directly after the first tuning, will give you a true tune. After the initial tune, you only need to do it once before practicing, and once after you practice until your harp holds its tune. This once through is usually good enough for most practice sessions. However, if you want to get a really good tune for playing in public, or if you have an extremely discerning ear, then you might want to tune the octus before you, your initial tuning is complete. All you do is start with the lowest C and check the sound out against the next C up. Do these two strings sound good together? If they have a good tone, when played together, do the D's, then the E's, and so forth all the way up the harp to double check your tones. Now we will move to the harp and actually go through this process so that you can clearly see what is going on. Once you have tuned your harp a few times, it becomes second nature and you can go through a basic tuning in just a couple of minutes. In this picture, you see the sharpening levers disengaged. You always disengage your sharpening levers before you tune. In this picture, you see the tuning key on the tuning pins in preparation for tuning a string. To tighten a string or to make the note higher, you twist the tuning key towards the long low strings. To loosen the string or make the note lower, you twist the tuning key towards the high smaller strings. Be very careful to only move the tuning key just a little, almost no movement at all. It doesn't take much to alter the tone. The metal core low strings of the harp need even less movement to alter the tone, so remember to take it easy. Once you have tuned your harp a time or two, this will become second nature.
In this picture, you can see the tuner is set to 440 Hz, which is usually the default on most turners. In this picture, you can see I have adjusted the tuning to 432 Hz, which is where I tuned my harp. In this picture, I have plucked a string, and you can see that it is registering as low, so I need to tune, turn the tuning key ever so slightly towards the long, low strings. In this picture, I have plucked a string, and you can see that it is registering high, so I need to turn the tuning key ever so slightly towards the high, short strings of the harp. In this picture, I have plucked a string and you can see that it is registering as dead on, so I don't need to do anything. You start at the bottom with the longest and lowest string, which is a C, and work your way up the harp till all the strings are dead on to their pitch. If you tune your harp to C major, you're done. If you tune your harp to E flat major, then you engage all the E, A, and B. B sharping levers so that your harp is set to the C major scale and you're done. Now I will discuss how to care for your harp. If you have young children or dogs in your house, make sure the harp is placed against a protected inner wall. Harps are innately top heavy and can tip over quite easily. Keep your harp out of direct sunlight and away from heating and air conditioning vents. Uh, the harp is an acoustic instrument and you need to keep it in a stable environment with a humidity level that hovers around 40 to 50 percent. In most locations, the spring, summer and fall months are stable enough for your harp. But winter is a tough one as the air tends to dry out too much for a harp. You need to be extra careful about the humidity through the winter. Never leave your harp in a parked vehicle on a hot day. The heat buildup in the vehicle will literally cause the glue that holds your harp together to melt. Not to mention what all of that heat will do to the finish of your harp. Not good at all. Jewelry and belts can cause scratches, so be careful with these items, especially when you are bending over your harp while you tune it. Never transport your harp without its case, or at the very least covered with a thick cloth. Don't use polishes or waxes on your harp. Just dust with a dry cloth. For detailed cleaning around the strings and sharpening levers, you can use a soft paintbrush. Always keep your harp tuned and replace any broken strings as quickly as possible. Also remember to never tune your harp higher than A440 Hz, as this could cause structural damage to your harp from string tension going beyond what the harp was manufactured to withstand. Well, that's it for today. Take care and happy harping! <laughs>